in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Hallelujah. the graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home Hallelujah. thank you for watching stay blessed let me tell you something let me tell you something if you are looking for convenience listen if you are looking for convenience koinonia is not the place for you are you listening to me if you're looking for convenience you want to come and have a dignified nice service this is not the place for you this is the place for as many who realize that God is raising and training an army men and women who love their future more than their today and are willing to pay the price no matter what it will cost you this is not the place for lazy people this is not the place for people who just want to laugh and feel good you must mean business with your destiny because there is an adversary called the devil and he will not stop his deep mean to make sure he wrecks your life the bible says rule thou in the midst of your enemies and until you train your spirit and you sharpen yourself the bible says it will be difficult falling down the tree because the head of the axe is dull but when there is a sharpening in the spirit you will walk in victory this is your price you're paying now. Lamentations 327. It is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth. Pay the price now. He said it is good that a man bears his yoke. Carry the burden now. Cry now. Sweat now. Look ugly while praying now. Because the day will come when he will lift you up and he will make a spectacle out of your life bible says there were 10 virgins all of them were virgins but five were foolish and five were wise the foolish ones were not foolish because they followed men they were foolish because they did not take extra oil the bible says all of them took oil but some said kai we don't know how long this will last. Let's take extra oil. This is what you are doing. The Bible says they waited. And all the other people lost their oil. And then they had an alarm that the husbandman was coming. And the remaining five, the foolish ones, didn't have extra oil. And they missed out. You're taking your extra oil now. You're filling the vessels. Your finances, your life, your health, your ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your hands and pray unto the Lord. And say, Holy Spirit, I want you to fill me. My spirit, my soul, and my body. I want to be so under the influence of the Spirit. Jesus did not give us a religion to be full of the Holy Ghost. My bones, every fiber of my cell, my blood, every part of my body full of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God that I become an expression of his person.
pray. Say, Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put down your hands. I have one guarantee. One. That this sacrifice that you're subjecting yourself to will reward you above and beyond what you are doing now. I assure you. Listen. Listen. What you are doing has monetary value. What you are doing has health value. What you are doing has honor value. You are doing this so that you will not chase after other things. Believe me. Listen. When, when a man gets up, and buys a brand new jeep pastor and comes to give a man of God that is somebody's prayer and fasting for one year yet somebody gets it as a reward for concentrating on the things of the spirit when they are telling other people no and it's a privilege for them to serve you it's because of a presence you are carrying the price you are paying now is more than what your education can give you. Believe me. Oh yes. It's more than what any business acumen on earth can give you. It's more than what any drug can give you. Staying in the presence. When you dwell in the presence, you carry the favor of God. You carry the light of God. You carry the power of God. You carry the wisdom of the spirit. I'm telling you, you will look as if you are half man and half something else. This is what happened to Paul. They said the gods have come down to us. What will make a man behave as if he's half man and half something else? But that's not a lie because that's what you really are. Partnership. The natural you plus the super God makes you supernatural. This is the price you're paying today so that you will not receive needless and useless no in your future. No for everything. You're paying the price now. Many of you are paying the price for a reward that no level of job interview will give you. You may not know. You may not know. In the house of Cornelius, the Bible tells us that when the angel appeared unto Cornelius, he said, your prayers and your arms. In other words, your kingdom investments and your sacrifices have been noted every time. Can I tell you something? The demons that are supposed to oppress your future, they are witnessing you as you are paying this price. They already know it's over for them. They are watching. The Bible says we are surrounded by many people. See, listen. This is what makes some people command power in public. When you, are, when you are doing what is seen and evil, God is watching you, Satan is watching you, demons are watching you, everybody is watching you. So when you come out, there's no pretense. But if you are generating power, God is watching. Satan is watching. God is saying, see now. You are seeing the legal claims of justice. You are watching it. You are watching. See, no man will truly serve God and re receive the reward of evil men. God is not like that. You are sending vapor to your cloud. And the Bible says, when the cloud be full of rain, it will empty themselves. I made up my mind that whatever it will cost me, I will pay that price till I attain unto that level that I see in the spirit. Many of us feel very complacent. Many of us feel we are okay. Refuse it. There is a greater level in the spirit. 
This is not about ministry. I hope you know. This is not about man of God. You will then find out in the future that you will never have to build one house by yourself. Everybody is blessing you. What is all this? You just tell someone, God bless you. Even by mistake, a door opens. You think he will leave you? What power? You're sleeping. Someone comes to sleep on your bed. He gets blessed. He puts his file. He's looking for job. His file touches you and he gets the work. See, handkerchiefs and aprons. That's what the Bible says. See, listen. Don't you think I'm just motivating you? This is what happens when you become full of the Holy Ghost. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is supposed to create the Garden of Eden anywhere it goes to. This is what is called the blessing. People have preached garbages and called it. The blessing is not a thing. The blessing is the presence of a personality. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangs upon that the blessing of Abraham, hold on. The blessing of Abraham is not prosperity. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. The Bible says, we like faithful Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. And so like Abraham, if we receive his blessing, the faith to believe God, then it ushers us to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. This is what the Bible calls in Psalms 133, the blessing. The blessing is not just prophetic pronunciation. The blessing is the presence of a personality. The Holy Spirit. So that whether it's through your words, whether it's through your actions, you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are full of the life of God. Someone comes to you and says, look, this door is not opening. And you say, let us pray. Such as I have. I have something better than money better than political positions and then a day will come you will speak over nations this is what is happening to you if you don't believe these things then there's no point coming because this is what we are training you to become hallelujah where you will give birth to your children and they'll be full of the holy ghost from the womb the bible says and john was full of the holy ghost People say this child came out with all kinds of demons. Useless things. The child comes out with teeth in his mouth. This is not the kind of heritage God is giving us. Why not come out with a prophecy? I don't know about you, but I plan to be an awesome wonder upon the earth. I want God to use my life to demonstrate to principalities and powers that he was not joking on that cross. And this is not ministry. This is the kingdom life. You're welcome. God bless you. Hug three people and sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. It's always, it's always a pleasure to teach the word and build ourselves in the things of the kingdom. And I thank God for an opportunity to do this again. It's always an awesome opportunity. Hallelujah. Take the word of God that you're receiving now very seriously. Because the Bible says, in the days of Samuel, when the word of God was scarce. Hallelujah. So the word of God can be scarce. But now that you have it, take it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to ask a question. And I want someone to attempt it. You can feel free. Don't feel embarrassed. This is a school. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be born again? What do you understand? Anybody? Feel free. Make your mistakes. Yes, sir. No mic. No problem. If there's no mic, let him just... 
Let's listen to our brother. Yes, sir. Self as a living sacrifice. To offer yourself uh, as a living sacrifice. To God. All right. God bless you. Any other? Yes. There's a brother down there. Are uh -huh, you? Uh -huh. To what? I'm, I'm not. I didn't hear him. To be mass in the Holy Ghost. All right. This side. Feel free. This is a school. Talk to me, my dear. To be born again means. To be born again, according to my understanding, means being saved by the salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross and living by the principles of the kingdom. All right. God bless you. Yes, my brother. You've used that word for yourself. So what did you do? That your human spirit is recreated through faith and confession. Okay. God bless you. Let's take two more people. Let's take someone from outside. Run with the mic. Someone. Two people. Let's take two people from outside. We're following those outside. So someone tell us. Lord, to be transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. All right. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. One more person. Hallelujah. Is to be made that of Christ. To what? To be made of Christ. Okay. A good follower of Christ. One lady must speak. Sisters. One sister outside. To have a new nature. To have that a new nature. Above the other. That is above the previous okay god bless you appreciate all these people <laughs> hallelujah when you become born again and you come into the kingdom of god listen for you to be equipped it's important for you to understand certain things about the kingdom hallelujah many believers do not have proper knowledge about many spiritual terminologies and this has affected our relationship with god hallelujah one of it interestingly is this concept of born again hallelujah there are many christians who don't know what it means to be born again they were not taught hallelujah they just preached a message on marriage and say in case you've not given your heart to the lord come out here and the person just came out from what into what he doesn't even know he just came and stood and while they were praying he was pinching his friend or his brother and sister and they just said amen they said clap for them follow these people and so many believers come into the faith without really knowing what imagine a student for instance who comes into the university and you ask him what is a university and honestly some of you may not be able to answer it and you're in final year what is a university no, no, I won't ask you to answer. But you are just realizing that I really don't know what it is. What is a university? What is the difference between a university and nursery school? The chairs or your uniform? So many Christians don't know the difference between what they were and what they are now. You see that? Because I'm very concerned. There are many people who are not born again. And that means they are going to hellfire. But they are in church. Please listen to me carefully. They are in church. Some have Christian names. Are you listening to me? But they are not born again. Because we were not taught when great men like D.L. Moody and Charles G. Finney and this great revivalist taught the concept of being born again, they taught it properly. And those who got born again really got born again. Hallelujah. But over time, the thing has been watered down. How many notable evangelists do we have in the world? Notable. Reinhard Bonke, Peter Youngry. Who? Benny Hinn. Who else? 
Tell us, born is late. Sorry? Well, Billy Graham has practically retired. He's just waiting for the day. Who else? Look at Christians. We don't even know the things that are happening around our world. Todd Bentley. Who? Who? Steve Hill. Who else? Eh? You, yes, your Imam Okpa is in Nigeria. What do you think I was talking about? You don't have evangelists in this country. Are you playing? How did your parents get sick? Hallelujah. I promise to be your friend this night. So let's just continue. By the way, how was last week? It was what? Many of you were happy that I was not around. Then you saw me again. Thank God for the media. Hallelujah. While I was in Niger State, I was wondering, in my mind, I was saying, by now they are listening. I was just imagining the way the word would be flogging out everything that was not of God. You will like me in the future. You may not like me now. Believe me. Thank you, Jesus. So what does it mean to be born again? Because the Bible has something to tell us about being born again. And if as Christians, we do not know what it means to be born again and the realities of the kingdom, then it means something is critically wrong. Because all of us at one point or the other are involved in some kind of evangelistic activities. Is that correct? Hallelujah. Whether through tracts. Some of us don't believe in tracts. You say it's old school. You go and find out the demonic books that initiate people into occult just by reading a pamphlet. Tracts are as powerful as ever. You are the one who has backslided, not the tracts. They still have the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you believe in them, they can save sinners. Hallelujah. Let's see what Jesus said. John chapter 3. I want to touch on some issues tonight that have been hot in my spirit. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. John 3. This was a conversation between Jesus Christ and Nicodemus. Oh, let me ask a second question before we continue. Please look up. To be saved and to be born again, are they the same or different according to your understanding? Yes, my brother. What do you think? Are they the same or are they different? Feel free, don't try to be right. All right, God bless you. That's his opinion. Who else? To be saved, to be born again. Yeah, the same. God bless you, sir. One more person. Yes, my dear. Yeah, the same. God bless you, sweetheart. All right. Let's find out. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again. So Jesus used the word himself. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now Nicodemus was, he was really worried. And he said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And be born look up so nicodemus is giving us his idea the mental picture he got from what jesus said correct so from what nicodemus is saying he understood what jesus meant to be that you enter into your mother's womb and come out again correct let's read on verse 5 jesus now answered he's now expounding remember he's responding to the question that nicodemus asked him 
so this is the born again issue now being expounded verse 5 verily verily i say unto you so now he re he replaces the word born again with something else except a man be born of what and of the he cannot and this is the reason six that which is born of flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again look up please i'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb your spirit just follow me hallelujah because number one i don't want you to go to hell number two i want you to be powerful and to be effective the bible says let's start from the scripture people use for being born again romans 10 let's start from verse 8 please make sure you are following tonight i just want to touch on issues and we'll pray born again is not the only thing i have three things to share i don't know what tonight's topic is i honestly don't know okay okay romans 10 i thought it will be projected romans 10 from verse 8 to 10 all right so what exactly was moses saying the word that saves is right here as near as the tongue in your mouth is this amplified please give us amplified this is not wrong we just want to use amplified but what does it say the word god's message in christ is near you on your lips and in your heart that is the word the message the basis and object of faith which we preach verse 9 because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that jesus is lord and in your heart believe adhere to and trust in and rely on the truth that god raised him from the dead you will be what verse 10 this is the general principle for with the heart a person believes adheres to trust in and relies on christ and so is justified declared righteous acceptable to god and with the mouth he confesses declares openly and speaks out freely his faith and confirms his salvation praise the lord look up please i want you to know that to be saved and to be born again are not the same hmm. the first question again i'm going to ask you questions tonight what are you saved from someone help us again to be saved means you are rescued redeemed from something correct what is a christian saved from honestly you are growing i'm 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 impressed there's one sister down there yes quickly sir death was we'll saved from death, death. Yeah. you mean can you explain like what kind of death see this this interactive session will make you a good student not a student of the bible a student of the kingdom yes sir during the time of adam and eve after man sinned they died like spiritually okay there was no reunion with god okay so we are saved from death okay from that death god bless you thank you so much that sister down there and then there's a sister down there praise god you are saved from yourself all right god bless you sister she said you are saved from yourself okay one more person let's just have that brother there yes sir you are saved from sin from satan and from death god bless you all right it's okay <laughs> let's let's hurry up now first and foremost let's understand what happened in the beginning hallelujah the bible says that god said genesis 1 26 and elohim said let us make man in our own image 
and after his likeness you know and so on and so forth and he made man correct the bible says in genesis 2 it says that god breathed into that breath that dust adam correct and he became a breath of life is that correct now was that initial man born again was he saved what happened to him hallelujah he couldn't have been saved isn't it because he didn't do anything is that correct what of born again the word again he had never existed hallelujah <laughs> please follow me don't be confused you must follow me this night you came for koinonia the bible tells us something interesting he calls jesus the firstborn is that correct when jesus rose again he calls him the firstborn among many brethren while jesus walked upon the earth he was called the only begotten son but when he died he didn't become the only begotten again he became what the firstborn firstborn to do what why was he called firstborn because he was the one who adumbrated and gave us a picture of what we call the new creation and what it should now become are you listening to me but before he became the firstborn what happened listen the bible says he became seen hallelujah his entire person was seen correct and he died when he died he went to the grave hallelujah his position in the grave was the prophetic picture of everyone's current state before god hallelujah and on the third day the bible says the holy spirit came and made jesus the firstborn do you read your bibles the holy spirit came and brought him back to life is that correct now but listen 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 because this is very important when jesus resurrected notice this when mary or martha who now came to touch him which of them who some of you wanted to say the mother of jesus you just close your mouth <laughs> hallelujah now when she came to touch him what happened he said although i've resurrected don't touch me it's not complete yet are, are you following me now he said don't touch me you will ruin the work because i'm about to go to heaven and do something that will complete it at that point anybody can touch me is it not in your bible and the bible tells us in the book of hebrews that he went to the heavenly tabernacle he became the priest the high priest and he became the lamb but he had raised up from the dead is that correct please don't be confused just follow me and the bible says he you know he didn't do that in hell are you listening to me and then the bible says he he poured his blood upon that heavenly tabernacle after that a coronation service was held in heaven immediately many of you think the coronation service happened in acts one no right away immediately in heaven he was coronated king of kings and lord of lords then he appeared before them and said all hail all power all authority in heaven was given to me when this is what the psalmist saw the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool so many things were happening between heaven and earth concurrently the second thing i want you to know is that jesus did not raise rise up from the dead after three days he was on the third day the bible does not tell us after three days jesus said on the third day correct so that gospel of after three days is not is not is not in the bible jesus did not resurrect after in that sense that the third day now finished that means he was on the fourth day uh -uh. he was on the third day are you learning something so 
Jesus resurrected from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen. Jesus was born by the Spirit. He was born again by the Spirit. He was glorified by the Spirit. The Bible says he was born in the womb of his mother by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? So he was born. No again there. He was born. <laughs> correct? When he rose up by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was now what? But then he told us that that was not all there was to that phase of born again. He needed to ascend. And then when he came back, he said, now you can touch me. Put your fingers in my thigh and everything. And the Bible says he now left bodily and this same Jesus is returning. If you do not understand what I'm teaching you, it will be difficult for you to understand any truth in the faith. Because many people have not produced the fruit of what the Bible says should characterize the life of a born again believer. Now listen to me. I want to shock you right now. When you are saved, please listen. You are saved How do I put this now? The blood of Jesus is what saves you. The incorruptible seed of God's word does not save. It brings you into the experiential workings of the kingdom. The Bible says we're born not by, it didn't mention blood there. If these things are in your Bible now. I won't show you the place. Hallelujah. Where then is the role of the blood of Jesus and the role of the word of God? Listen, when you understand the Jewish customs, none of them could be born again, but they could be saved. Are you listening to me? They could be saved by atonement. Atonement, the word atone means to cover. Are you listening to me? And so they would sacrifice a lamb and use the blood and pour it upon the mercy seat. And then when God looked down, he would see the blood. And it would be an adumbration of what Jesus was coming to do. And then it would pacify him. So it saved them, but for a period of time. Are you listening to me? But now, Jesus' plan was not just to save us alone. If his plan was to save us alone, then he did not need to die. Because before his death, blood was already coming out of his body. Are you following me now? Are you listening to me? So, the goal was not to atone for our sins. Atonement for our sins was necessary for us to receive the life of God. You get my point? Let me use two people. My brother, no, don't worry, Pastor. Please come, sweetheart. Come. You and this brother, come. Let me try and use an analogy that... Please stand here, sir. My dear, you stand here. Let me have someone again. You are wearing white, so come and be Jesus. Watch this. The Bible says Adam was created in the image and the likeness of God, isn't it? He had the righteousness of God. Now he lost the righteousness of God. He lost everything, the Holy Spirit, the entire life of God. So he was dead. That's what we call spiritual death. Are you listening to me? And now, this lady, for instance, wants to get to this brother. But it so happens that before she gets to this brother, she must meet this guy. Are you listening to me? Is this guy once, look at me, you are Jesus now. Once this guy does not see this person escorting her, he's not going to attend to her. Are you following me now? So for you to be able to stand in the presence of Jesus, the blood must atone for you. Are you listening to me? It is when you stand in the presence of Jesus, you are now qualified 
to receive his life to receive the holy spirit the holy spirit cannot come upon you if you have not been saved are you listening to me it is the holy spirit that initiates you into the born again experience but he cannot find expression until you are saved so the blood of jesus makes you blameless before the throne are you listening to me so you stand with the same righteousness as jesus christ faultless before the throne his righteousness and his blood has covered for you now on that ground the father looks at you and says i cannot see a sinner all i see is a replica of jesus christ and to prove to you that you have been saved he gives you his spirit that begins your journey of born again are you listening to me believers god bless you i just wanted to demonstrate this please do you understand this you have to understand it this night in jesus name do you understand this so far so the first thing that happens is the blood the blood makes way are you listening to me so the blood of jesus does not do everything as it were in the equation of salvation because the word of the lord will also be spoken he will declare you not guilty the bible says ah, is in your bible unto him jude 24 who is able to keep you from falling and present you so jesus presents you faultless is that correct i just want to save time i would have shown you all this scripture until jesus presents you faultless this is what the high priest did so he presents you as having his own righteousness and on that ground the spirit of god the spirit of glory the spirit of adoption comes upon you and now you can cry abba father in other words jesus has become the firstborn that's why people sing songs and say god is my father jesus is my brother you get the sense of saying he's my brother <laughs> christians it's amazing isn't it so that born again is where i have a problem with many christians because we have been taught that once you come on stage i know we use the word born again please understand this jesus said except you be born of water please give us john 3 5. let me explain to you what jesus was saying he said except ye be born of water hold on ye be born of water what is the function of water except a man be born of water and that means after that experience of water there is something that will still happen the spirit you cannot truly be said that you are born again you have not entered into the experience of the kingdom life there are so many believers that have been saved the condition for being saved is that you call upon the name of the lord the condition for being born again is that you walk and allow the word to build you until the life of god is fashioned and framed in you i know we generally interchange them and use born again you get my point but i want to explain to you the scriptural dynamics of what it means to be born again because when you understand this you will know that there are many christians many people who are not born again if you truly are born again it is impossible for people around you not to recognize that you're born again because your being born again is a product of your work with the spirit and your work with the word the word is building you And there is an outworking that demonstrates to everybody around you that you are born again and I'm very concerned because you find out that what somebody was doing he gave his life to Christ is the same thing he's doing after he gives his life to Christ two years later he's still doing the same thing let me tell you he's not born again 
I know that many of you don't like what I'm preaching. Because this is the deceit that has been in the body of Christ. There are many believers who are jumping. Can I tell you something? The condition for you to go to heaven is not just that you come out and say, Oh Jesus, I love you. And then you say, at least my name is in the book of life. And this and that and that. Uh-uh. 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 Just like the condition to give your life to Satan. It's not just that you say, Satan, use me. But he must find you in active service, demonstrating your willingness. Hallelujah. Is that correct? It's disturbing me very seriously. Because there are many people who are going to go to hell from the church. I'm saying this thing. Please listen to me. This is the voice of the Lord. There are many people on their way to hell because they've been taught that all it takes is just three seconds away. Jesus, I love you. I repent. Be my Lord. Amen. And they say, beautiful, wonderful. Now you can go just live your life. And the person say, wow, if it was this easy, this is nice. And he's doing everything that he knows and wants to do. After 30 years, you look at this person. And you say, are you a Christian? The person say, yes. How do you know you are a Christian? He say, I remember on the 25th of 1979, I made that glorious decision. Let me tell you the truth. There are many people who made these kinds of decisions, but they are in hell today. Listen to me. I want you to grow up. I don't want you to be in deceit. Because the devil is smiling. You don't know how Satan hates what I'm about to teach you. Because there are many people who are on the highway to hell. Believe me. When many of you read books and you hear about people who went to hell. Many of you think it's a joke. Let me be honest with you. It's not a joke. Hallelujah. Someone is born again. After five years, after six years, there is no difference. You walk in sin, you walk in iniquity. The same, there is, have you seen Christians like that? The only thing is you know you saw them the day they were making that decision. But after four years, after five years, nothing has changed. Let me tell you something, the Holy Spirit is not working in that life. Listen to me. If you pour water in this bottle and you put it in a fridge... After one hour, what do you expect? There must be something that tells you this water has been taken from out of one atmosphere into another. You can't hide it. Are you listening to me? If after three hours you come and you find out that this water is not cold, what is wrong? Either the fridge is spoiled or the person just kept the water near the fridge but it did not enter. This is what is happening to many believers. Are you listening to me? So, many Christians believe that the evidence, listen please, listen please. And I'll show you where the place of faith is because I know many of you say, ah, this is a thing of faith. This is what I want to balance. Because the devil has deceived many people. Just say it's just by faith, don't worry. It is by faith for you to begin the journey, not to end and stop there. You believe by faith that you have confessed Jesus as Lord. And by faith, his spirit has come to live in you. What happens? Faith is a response to the reality of a word. And then you begin to walk with the word. I'm going to show you some things. Help us tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help us. The Bible says, In that day, many shall say, We prophesy in your name. Is it in your Bible? Others will say, we healed in your name. What will he tell them? Depart from me. The healers, the prophets, depart from me. There needs to be a redefinition of authentic Christianity. I'm provoking many of you to get back to the word. Because all the things we know, many of us didn't study it. Somebody preached it. You believed it, you received it. And it has become your ideology. But let's search the word, brothers and sisters. Something is critically wrong with our Christianity. Because our Christianity does not seem to create any effect in the realm of the spirit. 
in ancient times when people got born again you saw radical changes look at paul saul now are you listening to me what happened from that time onward there was no issue of one day he decided to say look are you not concerned please listen to me a man of god claims to be born again after many years he now tells you after 30 years of walking with the holy spirit he tells you i've been suffering this since i was a boy so is it that the holy spirit could not walk and bring an effectual walking or something is wrong once again i know i'm going to be criticized for this message but i rather tell you the truth so that you will know you are standing in authentic christianity hallelujah 99 percent of believers ask them what makes you think you are born again they tell you the date they bring a date they say on the 14th and there are ministries they even tell them you must write there's a place in the form you write the date and so you see someone you know is far from the kingdom but he can because you can present a date hallelujah you present a date Someone is in the beer parlor. You are preaching to him. He said, let me tell you. This born again thing you are talking. Let me tell you the truth. In, I remember in 1971. We went to preach in this. Look at the person who is telling you he's born again. Are you listening to me? You believe he's going to heaven. Let me tell you he's not going to heaven. But he's convinced. He has a form. That shows you he came out. And he's not living by the word he's not doing anything go to tj palace today is friday i heard there's the name of one dangerous satanic place what's the name of that place one club in town maze or mate or something maze mate hallelujah now you go and meet somebody there you will be surprised to go and find out that those people go to church on sunday hallelujah they go to church on Sunday. Some of them even pray in tongues. Christians, please listen to me tonight. I'm bringing you a clarion call. The Bible says, examine yourself and check if you are in the faith. That means a man can be deceiving himself and not be of God. Paul talked of certain people. He said they were never part of us in the first place. They were never part of us. Are you listening to me? If you come to Jesus Christ, you confess him as Lord and you receive soteria, salvation, that is only the beginning of what we call your born again experience. Are you listening to me? You are saved instantly. You are not born again instantly. Are you listening to me? Your salvation brings you as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is not on account of your works. It's on account of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Totally on account of his grace. And then after that, what happens? The spirit of God enables you to begin to show forth the fruits of salvation by your partnership and oneness with the spirit of God. Are you listening to me? When that happens, the life of God begins to flow not just from your spirit. It finds expression in your mind. It changes your mindset and your mentality. At that point, your value systems are re-edited. The things you used to have appetite and desire for begins to change. Then people around you begin to see that, ah, ah this sister, we know her now. Was this not the lady that used to dance in TJ Palace? Hallelujah. She doesn't need to announce. There is something happening in her. Hallelujah. And then Pastor Alpha that you would have given him a slap and he will give you back. You give him back. And then he tells you as well. The Lord bless you. What is happening? Fruits of transformation. A demonstration of the authority of the kingdom. Gaining grounds in you. How did you know Jesus was the son of God? It wasn't just because he said it. He was doing something differently 
there are many Christians whose lives are not different. And we are, we are deceiving ourselves from church to church. If you are a pastor here, listen to me. Go and stay with the word of God because God will judge you if you mislead God's people. Oh, this is the new, this is the new wine rising. I tell you the things that God is doing in the earth will re-edit Christianity as you would have known. This is what happened to our fathers. They had songs that they sang as evidences of their experiences. Hallelujah. Remember the good old songs people sing. Different songs. He touched me. He touched me. They said something happened for many people nothing happens and the man of god said don't worry it's just a thing of faith after one year this guy is still alive and strong has no desire for god but the bible says the seed of god is supposed to be in him hallelujah hmm. something is really wrong with our concept of salvation and born again because we have been told that the moment you give your heart to the Lord you are fit for heaven therefore relax do you know that God's ultimate idea is not to take you to heaven I hope you know the purpose of getting born again is not to go to heaven the purpose of getting born again is to conform to the fullness of the image and the statue of Christ hallelujah you can lose your salvation but when you become born again there is no going back again because this is this is an is you can't undo it again it was you and the holy spirit this is the disciples could die for jesus because they were born again we have many people who claim they are saved and they are dying they are going to hell we have many people who believe they are born again. They believe they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet there are idols in their house. It's not like it's a struggle. Some of you are looking at me in your house is there. Is there. And some of our fathers have it. You go to church on Sunday. You do, there are idols. There are other rooms. The man tells you I'm born again. He even speaks in tongues. Ba, 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 ba. But there are idols there. Nothing is changing in him. You are a liar. The Bible says, if we confess that we, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. Hallelujah. So how do you walk in the kingdom? You get saved by the revelation in Romans 10, 9 to 10. What does that mean? You receive of the grace of God and you stand faultless before the throne. The Holy Spirit comes in your life. Listen to me. The proof that you are walking with God is not necessarily that you are reading your Bible. I want to surprise you now. Look up. Hmm. Jesus. I won't teach this anywhere. I trust the maturity God has brought us so far. That's why I'm able to teach this. Do you know that there are some people in some nations of the world who will never have the opportunity to hold a Bible? Is that correct? So how do those people grow? Let me tell you the truth. The evidence that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life is that your life begins to conform to the principles of the kingdom. Both principles you know or you don't know, your life begins to conform into it. One day you will read the Bible and find out that before you found certain revelations, you are already walking in the obedience. That's a sign that the Spirit of God is walking in your life. Hallelujah. Look up. Do you know that the apostles did not know that what they were walking in was called the gift of the Spirit? Maybe if it was John that wrote the book of Acts, he would have called it enablement of the Most High. So he would have said there are nine enablements of the Most High. The name did not matter. They all walked with the Holy Spirit and found themselves walking in the principles of the word. Now, this was documented so that because of the perverseness that will come in our generation, so that we can compare the dealings of God and test spirits. So, the Holy Spirit 
is the only one who can bring any man in conformity to the word of God and the principles of the kingdom. Are you listening to me? Eternity will take you to read and understand and know all the principles of the word of God. But if you walk with the Holy Spirit, you will find yourself walking in certain realities. I've gone to places and villages that we have had the opportunity to preach. And we prayed for people who could not speak English. And later on, we saw these people and we saw the fruits of the works of Christ at work in them. The women were prophesying. They did not know that what they were doing is called prophecy. They just knew that they were walking by the Spirit. They were becoming more like Jesus Christ. This is what a lot of believers need. There are many people who quote scriptures, but the word of God is not in them. Because the word of God is not the issue of cramming. It is the Holy Spirit that brings you into that reality. If the Holy Spirit does not bring you into that reality, you can pretend. That's why a lot of people say, by stripes I'm healed. By stripes I'm healed and nothing happens. It is the Holy Spirit that brings you into that reality. You see that the Holy Spirit is really what we need in the kingdom. This is not the issue of being a Pentecostal. This is not the issue of getting born again. I know that we represent different churches, different denominations. Take your mind away from that. And let's focus on the kingdom. Jesus was born because the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Jesus was raised from the dead because the Holy Spirit came and quickened his mortal body. Hallelujah. And we are born when we acknowledge it is the holy spirit who convicts us of sin of righteousness and of judgment and then we stand in the finished work of christ let me oh i don't have all the time i need to touch some other things maybe one time we'll take it as a series but let me say something a little about the finished work of christ what is the finished work of christ the finished work of christ talks about all that was accomplished on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ this is what we call the finished work of christ the finished work of christ is what the realities that are available unto us on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ redemption our health victory over satan the guarantee that we are going to get to heaven everything that we do in the kingdom is on account of the finished work of christ but this is where i must making the finished work of christ a practical experiential reality in your life is not just by confession alone it's by walking with the spirit and you will imagine to that are you listening to me this is where a lot of people miss it so someone can be suffering from certain things and he just says lord in the name of jesus i take you by your word your word has said this and that and that why do you call me lord lord but will not do there is a doing there is a doing brothers and sisters there is a doing this is not the works of the flesh because they are motivated by the spirit are you listening to me they are works but not of the spirit james said show me your faith by your confession and i will show you my faith through the things that i'm doing so when people attack works they say look everything is grace no works the only work is speaking it's not exactly correct the only thing is that if our work is a derivative of the law of moses and the flesh then it is not consistent with the with the lord are you listening to me but then if it is a derivative of the activity of the spirit of god in your life that is the labor that brings you into rest hallelujah so examine your life tonight many of you have confessed jesus as lord and you truly did it but let me tell you something you are not walking with the spirit there is no change in your life there is no evidence in your life and many of us have been convincing ourselves you don't pray the things of the kingdom don't interest you have you seen many people that love god yet they have no passion for the things of god Look at me. You are a university student. Do you love your lectures? Do you love your lectures? If you have a test and Arsenal is playing football, which one will you go for? Because of the value. Are you listening to me? That's a sign that you are a real... Are you listening to me? 
that you love but there are many believers who tell you they are born again they don't even know the jesus they are talking about they have no interest for him those kinds of people if they do not watch their lives they are going to miss it and they will go to hellfire hallelujah there are many men of god who carry bibles go to church they don't love god they have no desire it just so happened that they attended seminaries or schools of ministry and then they just ordained them they just found themselves in ministry and they believe that because they have a date that they put that they gave their lives in quotes to jesus christ they just believe you see that these people do not love god they are still doing idolatry they are still drinking they are still doing everything they are doing and they tell you when the role is called up yonder not everybody will be there some people will not be there i'm teaching this message so that some of us will begin to intercede for our loved ones because some people and families have been deceiving themselves but they are not known by god i don't want to deceive you i want you to walk authentic you must look at the life of a believer sister you must be able to tell me what you used to do that you are not doing now if not the life of god is not truly finding expression in you are you listening to me when somebody starts smoking a boat after two weeks you will know correct either he begins to behave foolish and stupid number one or number two his mouth begins to turn black or number three his life changes anytime he sees you he's just hiding something pieces of paper something is happening to him that is an evidence that is beginning to adopt a new lifestyle what is your own and it so happens that if it is the same spirit that is working on all of us that means our experiences should be similar this is what makes us a family of faith so is something not wrong that many of our churches have different versions of born again that don't come near at all it means something is wrong because if it is the same spirit of the living god that is instituting these experiences the bible tells us that the church in corinth the church in ephesus the church different churches but it was when you read the writings of all the people that wrote the bible you see a consistency that all of them acknowledged the lord and they walked according to the principles of the kingdom some of them were 200 300 years apart but you saw the consistency what is wrong I'll stop here on this topic this is Sila I'm just I'm just communicating tonight the things that have been brewing in my spirit I trust God for grace for God to permit us to start writing books man of God there are books that must be written are you listening to me there are books there are tapes this is what honestly if you have a message like this it is on this ground you can now pray and say lord a tv ministry is necessary are you listening to me not all these things that people do everybody just wants to go on air 10 minutes of noise 15 minutes of noise do you have a message to the body of christ look at how many of you have been challenged this night many of you will live quietly and go and find out is this true some of you will be arguing on the way i don't believe this i will study sir this is what happened to the body of christ when jesus taught the bible says some were afraid some were astonished some were angry and they left how come we teach in our churches and many people are so happy something is supposed to rattle you and challenge you it's called hallelujah the second thing i want to talk about is i want to talk a little about the end times please look at me in a few minutes we'll round up even if it's 10 minutes i feel it's important i share this god has been showing me visions and i've been having a lot of revelations and i think i will share some of them right now god has permitted me to bring some of them hallelujah in the last few weeks i've been seeing things that have baffled my spirit 
and have if not because i trust the spirit of god i may not even believe some of them hallelujah one time i looked and i saw creatures upon the earth like giants please follow me they were almost maybe 14 or 15 feet It looked like they were half humans and half whatever, something else. Hallelujah. And then when I got up, I said, Lord, what is, what is all this? What are you showing me? And then God didn't say anything and so I kept quiet. And when I slept, I had the same experience. Not exactly the same, but the same again. I said, Lord, you are, you are showing me something. And then the Lord began to teach me from 1st John. He said, test all spirits. Please follow me very carefully tonight. He said what? Test all spirits. Because not every spirit is of God. He said, herein we know the spirit of error and the spirit of Christ. Any spirit that does not acknowledge that Jesus has come in the flesh. Then I began to study. There was a man, I won't call his name, his materials are not, you don't, you must be a real matured believer, he's a Christian, to study his teachings. If you study his teachings when you are not grounded with the word, it will shake you. In fact, because of the experiences he had, he forbade his works from being released until he died and then a few people said that they would release some of his materials. Well, I read something about his material and... I just threw it away now listen I said all this to say this the Lord began to speak to me about the one world government many of you have heard of the one world government if you are not let me tell you let me have your attention tonight because as long as you are alive this involves you the one world government where the whole world will come under one leader who will seem to bring peace and prosperity upon the earth and i said lord how come the look at boko haram here al-qaeda here this and that at what is it what is that event that will make people throw aside their differences are you listening to me look at people your some of you your neighboring states they are fighting they are swearing to God that they will leave this land. This is our land and they are fighting. Look at the kind of confusion that is in the world. Yet the Bible tells us a time will come. Everybody will lay aside every other agenda and agree to submit to an authority. And I said, Lord, how will that happen? And the Lord began to give me this revelation. Please listen. Hmm. The Lord told me that there will be a deception that is coming upon the earth. This is a prophetic teaching now. Just give me 10 minutes and we'll pray. Are you listening to me? A manifestation. How many of you have heard what we call UFOs? Unidentified flying objects? How many of you have heard all of those things? Now, the Lord told me this year, there will be an increase of that activity. And strange beings from other planets, listen to me, will begin to come to planet Earth. It had been happening, but in secret. And the Lord said, this is a sign that is coming. It's very close. I said, Lord, can you prove this to me from scripture? And the Lord said, yes, and I will show you from scripture. Follow me, Matthew. Or oh, let's take the, the version of Luke. Luke 9. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. This is a matured believer's class. 55. Are you there? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirits ye are of. Aha. Uh -huh. That means there are different manners of spirits. He said, you do not know the manner of spirits ye are of. And then I didn't understand. Turn with me to chapter 17 now. 
17 verse 26. Blessed Jesus, thank you. I want to show you a mystery tonight. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Let's read 26. One to read. Can we project it? Is it possible? He said, And as it was in the days of who? Noah. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Look up. He says, as it was in the days of who? Noah. That means an event took place around the time of Noah that will repeat itself in the earth. And this is a sign that the Son of Man is coming. Look up. The Bible tells us in Genesis 6 that a time came when the sons of God came upon the earth and slept with the daughters of men. And they gave birth to a race we call Nephilim. Giants. Genesis 6. Genesis 6. Help us, Lord. Verse 1 to 4. Ah! I wish I had time. I wish I had time. Genesis 6, 1 to 4. I need to show you this. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. Verse 2. That the sons of God. Look at this. The sons of God. Saw the daughters of men that they were fair. The word fair there means beautiful. And they took them as wives of all which they chose. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet in his days shall be 120. And then verse 4, let's read again verse 4 and then we'll stop there. Listen, he said they were what? These were the products. Listen to me. These were the products of an intercourse between normal human beings and certain beings that were not human. And also after that, when the sons of God came in, in other words, sleep unto the daughters of men and they bear children and they became mighty men. Nimrod, Goliath, you see them? These were giants, mighty men. They were not normal. They had superhuman strength, six fingers, six. Archaeologists right now have discovered fossils of people ahead of humans that were as big as this. That a time came that giants... You know, I found this and I kept quiet with it for weeks. And then a few days ago, I went to Sidrod's site. And boom! I saw the shock of my life. They just interviewed certain people. Who began to talk about some of these things. I cannot speak in details because doing this, I will have to offend many ministries to say this. And so, I will, this is not the platform to share this. Are you listening to me? But then I will show you the things that are happening. That in, was it 1967? One of the presidents of America, some of these identified objects came and they had meetings with them three times. It was concealed, classified information that they are upon the earth. What is their work? As it were in the days of Noah. So they are come, you know the Bible says the earth was corrupt. And he said only Noah was righteous. The word righteous there is not blameless. It means his DNA was not corrupted. So he said now you and your eight children and everybody come in. Because the whole race were corrupted by these people. Many of you may say oh son of God. I know there have been different teachings. That angels. The word son of God was used in ancient times to mean any deity that is above humans. But lower than God. You get my point? And the only deity that falls within that category are the angels. Because there's a place in scripture that said, To none of the angels did he say at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten you. The word son there is not son as in the son that was used for Jesus Christ. This was an interplay of Greek and Hebrew words. Let me just give you one scripture to prove. Job 38. Job 38, if you can project it for us, please quickly. We're out of time. We must pray. Hmm. Job 38 verse 7. 
I'm sharing this with, with you because you are part of the army. Who would have known that the star that appeared in the sky was a sign that something was happening? Hallelujah. Other people were just looking and said the sky is bright, but some people knew. The Bible says the men of Issachar, they had an understanding of the time. Many of you say, what is the relevance of this? Hold on. Read. He said, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Let's start from 36, please. 36 and 37. 36. Thank you, Jesus. He said, who had put wisdom in the inward parts or who had given understanding to the heart? 37. Who can number the clouds? What did I say? 37. I'm sorry, 6 and 7. That was a mistake. I found a very interesting scripture. Where the Bible, he said, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? He said, and who had laid the corners thereof? Seven. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This was during creation. Man was not yet there, yet they were given certain names. Morning stars, sons of God. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? When he looked and saw four people in the fire, he said the appearance of the fourth was like what? A deity that is not human and he called him a son of God. So it was, it was common for them to call anything superhuman. But these were the fallen angels that slept with the daughters of men. A lot of theologians teach that the sons of God were the progenitors of Seth. That's not true. It's not correct. It doesn't make sense. Listen. The Lord began to show me that this is how HIV and cancer came. Let me tell you something. There are, there are demonic entities parading themselves as aliens and unidentified flying objects coming to have dealings with men. As a reward, they are giving them super intelligence. As a reward, look at the scientific research on immortality that they are doing right now. Recently, they caught someone, removed a chip from him that was given to him by an alien and he would last 450 years. Wake up. You wake up every morning and move around in your world and have no knowledge. The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. When the Lord began to show me this, I said, Lord, what is all this? What is going on? And the Lord told me, as it were in the days of Noah. It's in your Bible. Jesus said it. Hallelujah. This is the event of the rapid manifestation of beings to planet earth that would distract everybody in planet earth. And the issue of mini crisis will, will, will be left for a greater emergency and there will be need to unify the world as one. Hmm. Hallelujah. There are so many things happening right now an observation of all of these ufos these deities they are demons they are devils they are not just coming for long the people the witch in our villages have always known that planet earth is not the only planet that is inhabited science is just discovery our grandfathers and grandmothers told us these things because people who do astral travel have traveled to many planets and come back there is a shock. This 2013, you mark it, is an unfolding of many things. I tell you these things so that you will know and you will see and you will be wise. Jesus said you do not know what spirit you are in because there are many people who will go to mountains for prayer and fasting and suddenly will have certain beings appear that look like God and their interaction with those beings will leave them. They will come back with acumen and intelligence that you cannot imagine. They will think it's a God encounter, but they have traded themselves, the sons of God, sleeping with the daughters of men. This is why I'm teaching you this. There are many men of God that what they met was not the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. That's why I showed you that scripture. He said, test all spirits. Because they will appear and manifest to people. And attempt to corrupt the race. Hallelujah. And we will embrace them and be happy. We are the generation right now where everybody wants every kind of thing. 
ladies want a macho man well built nice there are many they are coming we are five feet or six feet you hold on 14 feet is coming hallelujah what is their goal to corrupt the race to corrupt the race and so because of that what happens there is a rebuilding of the ark that noah built and this is the ark there is a rebuilding hallelujah there is a rebuilding and he told noah he said gather you and all your people because i'm going to cause rain to come and it will judge the earth it will judge the earth right now there's all kinds of things happening in our atmosphere the chlorofluorocarbon is depleting there is a rise in sea levels the lord showed me go and read um follow the january message i told you there will be a greater flood this year than last year because the sea level is going to rise greatly when we traveled to niger i was asking joe to teach me some things let me just find out about this sea level thing i saw floods of catastrophic phenomenon because a major part of the water in the world is saved as ice and now because of the heat that is coming upon the earth is melting the water so it's eating up landmass are you listening to me this is what is happening and there are many things that are going on i read an article january 13th the prime minister of russia was telling obama that he should stop hiding the issue of aliens and he should open up and tell the world the truth is there you can go and get it online what are these people hiding is there something our governments know is there something the un and the african union and the g8 knows is there have they been deceiving us there's too much drama happening in this world and many believers are just laughing Bible says but there is a part that no fowl know it there is a part where the whelps of no lion has trodden upon these are the secret things that belong to them that fear the Lord do you see the reason why the Bible says if not that God averted this even the elect will be deceived even the elect who are the elect even the elect what kind of phenomenon will happen that would deceive an authentic man of God this is why God is granting us this knowledge so you'll be strong because you will begin to see pastors are the most gullible when things come like this we just receive it as a new move in our quest to get into deeper things in God what happens we begin to see certain manifestations right now there are different kinds of teachings immortality and all kinds of things people begin to question the issue of the rapture some of this revelation came by these demons are you getting what i'm telling you now so they come and download it and then a lot of people get up under these inspirations and they come and they say there is a there is a depth that found out that's why i told you the spirit of christ will make you become like the word this is not to make you afraid but is to forewarn you especially those of us who are just running elter skelter with everything new you call rema are you listening to me everything new people just call rema they say i was sleeping there are many encounters that people call heaven encounters that are demonic that place they went to was not heaven because the things they brought back these are not heavenly things i know someone who just um who just got saved one one guy like this unbeliever and then he said he went to hell he mentioned the name of every man of god you know everyone including those who are alive he said they are all going to hell i said wait what is this nonsense don't laugh don't laugh this is the spirit at work now the guy is innocent he just got born again you see this is why those who will serve in the ministry must be thoroughly furnished there's no issue of just getting up and carrying gift of the spirit and running you must gain structure in the spirit otherwise you will be deceived and you will deceive others are you listening to me there are all kinds of strange these spirits are appearing to men of god and leading them to read all kinds of books diabolic books to find paths to prosperity and the rest 
when I was small, there was a book I saw in the library one day. I never knew anything much about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But I know that I had a voice that warned me. It's called the greater works of Solomon. Don't you ever find yourself reading that book. These are satanic books. Right now, they write all kinds of books. I warned you about a book called 48 Laws of Power. Many of you have seen it. You like it. When you read that book, you can become a millionaire in less than two months. But you have mortgaged your soul for hell. It teaches you the spiritual principles of seduction. You will capture the souls of men, literally. This is what many of our men of God are reading. Another spirit. Are you following me now? As it were in the days of Noah. So you see a man who does not fast, does not pray, does not build himself, but is coming in with all kinds of rema from wherever. He tells you, I was caught up in the spirit and I went to one plane in the spirit and I met a man. His name is so, 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 so. And he said he will walk with me. Uh, 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 uh. That's the spirit of error. It's already happening to many people in this Nigeria. They go and lock themselves and they are interacting with strange spirits that are not of God. They are coming up with revelations that are deviating the body. That's why I told you people to, to listen to the message on the apostate church. Some of our parents are already victims of those people now. Because some of them, deities appeared to them and told them that they are in the same status with Jesus Christ. And that every man that believes in them will receive eternal life. Oh, they are on TV. You don't watch them. They have their regalia that they wear. Pastor, is, is that true? Many of them. You hear their experiences. They tell you one Jesus appeared to them and told them that there is no need he functions. They should be him on the earth. So it is within their power to give men eternal life. And they have many followers. This is the deceit. Some of us, they are our pastors, we belong to their churches. It's time for you to repent and call your family members quick and tell them as it were in the days of Noah. It's already happening now. These spirits will make deities God. Notice, every time these spirits found expression with men, it made the men to want to be like God. Look at Nimrod. Nimrod Kush suddenly assumed the position of God. An exerted influence. Remember Nebuchadnezzar wanting to build a city. Every time this spirit manifests. And this is what is happening in many of our churches right now. There are men of God who have their thrones and their rings and their chairs. It was given to them by a spirit. When you come and kiss it, it gives you eternal life. Let me tell you tonight, listen to me. I'm telling you straight to the point. These things are not the operation of the spirit of Christ. Hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you. This is the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is not to give you a critical spirit, but it's to help you discern. This is why in the days to come, every believer should stay with the Holy Spirit and hold your Bible carefully. This rat race of running man of God, me, man of... You will, you will land into all kinds of things. A young man came three like two months or so ago to come and meet me he went to meet a man of god in in abuja and they took him popular man in abuja they took him somewhere i was shocked when he was telling me this he went to different other places and they told him to turn to the wall that the holy spirit was going to speak the guy told me the building shook he said the building shook they asked him to carry something that a paper with stone inside outside he said he brought it and it burned to ashes in his presence talk about signs and wonders so you don't just see every man stand on tv and just doing signs and one i'm not teaching you to be judgmental but i'm teaching you to be matured in the spirit hallelujah so a man comes to your house and looks at you and says your father has this and that and say hey prophet of god calm down you must learn to descend of which spirit jesus said know ye not what spirit you are made of there are many spirits that are aiding men to do different things and they are not the spirit of god hallelujah they are empowering many people to make signs and wonders many of the musicians and the artists that you see most of these people met with these spirits and it exploded them i'm telling you Mm -hmm. most of them are possessed with this spirit 
or most of them made this. the songs that they write come from this spirit i used to have one one naughty boy he's now late when we were in secondary school this guy told me that there was a woman you know i was the one in charge of deliverance and prayer when anything happens they come and call me this guy used to meet us and tell us that there was a nice woman that used to come to him he said she didn't her legs don't touch the ground it looks like the leg of a fish that she used to advise him to read books this once he's four on the dot this guy will run to our chapel she will go and enter we plan one day we say all right be talking to her us will run and come and enter he said when he's singing special number she joins him sometimes she takes him to the place where i won't mention the name of the water some of you won't drink it again but uh, only god knows how many hallelujah she takes him there they play together aha uh -huh. these are these beings and deities i'm telling you that boy was convinced he started doing things like a woman i used to look at him the thing used to pain me so what kind of boy are you like this the boy was gentle he had an excellent voice and he was not like that he said it was when he met the woman he said they used to sing like with her i told him i remember i told him tell the woman we are here let's see what she'll say then we're powerless the woman didn't even respond to itself hallelujah we are going to pray but are you seeing the relevance of some of the things i'm sharing with you so believers let's get back to the foundation and start re-examining what our faith is standing upon start being Bereans to begin to scrutinize the teachings that we have been receiving please don't criticize any man of god we don't castigate men of god but we attack things that are not consistent with the word of god are you listening to me you need to go and that's why i told a lot of people you see a man sir he's not praying he's not fasting he's not staying with the word be careful though be careful the bible says even the elect if care is not taken they will be deceived americans are hiding a lot of things from us our government know a lot of classified information they will not tell us i bring you a message tonight we are not alone in this planet and the earth is about to receive rude visitations because mankind have already signed pacts and covenants with these spirits on behalf of many people and this is is permeating nations are you surprised these children that are running and shooting people in america you ask the children they will begin to tell you they are seeing somebody they are talking with somebody how can a little child just stand up he's not conscious of being possessed but you see him just carry a gun and start killing people a little child you really think that energy is his own can you crack a gun and shoot it it will throw you down it will throw you down if you hold a gun to, a, a gun to shoot it the recoil effect it will throw you down yet a small child will hold it this is a super superhuman ability are you not seeing brothers and sisters examine it so that you do not carry a false anointing so that you do not carry a false power the holy spirit is the only hope of this generation if we leave the holy spirit in search for many things you will get different devils and demonic spirits rise up on your feet basketballers right now nba look at me because of the effects of vitamins certain vitamins and supplements on them they are looking for certain bio genetic ways of making them mighty without having to take supplements you see that what a what a good way to prepare the part of the coming of these beings because men want to be tall and gigantic look at me how do you think the egyptians build the pyramids how do you think they build those pyramids you are hearing certain things that will make you i know for some of us you just say well thank god boy it doesn't concern me let it concern you because this is about heaven and hell brothers and sisters are you listening to me i do not want you to be deceived i don't want you to miss out you are going to pray three prayer points and we're done tonight we're going to say lord grant me grace re-examine me if i'm not standing in the truth 
re I re-examine myself in the light of your word. Lift your voice. Please pray everyone inside and outside. In a generation where we are hungry for power, we are hungry for knowledge. The Bible says, and knowledge shall increase. The Bible says we should re-examine ourselves and find out whether we are still in the faith. Heaven is real. Listen to me. Hell is real. Jesus is coming soon. I bring you this clarion call. Jesus is truly coming. And there are some people that will not make it. There is deceit going around the world. This is not to put fear in you. It's to let you depend upon the word. Pray. Hallelujah. Look up. Next prayer point. Jesus began to pray in Matthew chapter 6. He said, when you pray, say this. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Many of you do not know the relevance of that prayer. He said, Lord, do not allow us to enter into these things, but deliver us from evil. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace and discernment. As I explore realities in the realm of the spirit, as I listen to preachings, as I go for conferences, and conventions as hands are laid upon me lead me not into temptation oh god deliver me from evil deliver me from deceit pray for your family some of them are already in deep deceit prophets senior apostles different people make sure you are praying for yourself hallelujah hallelujah you're going to pray listen look up the bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times. Men, see, thank God for your coming to Koinonia. Many of you do not know what the Lord is doing in your life. These are not the kinds of messages you hear in many meetings. The men of God don't even care about these kinds of things. But there is a reason why God is giving you this message. Because... As this darkness is happening, I bring you another news. There are saviors that I imagine. This is why I am telling you this. Because it concerns you. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, and saviors shall arise. Koinonia, hear me. The shofar will soon blow. Hear me. I truly believe that in the days to come, the signs and the wonders that will happen in the sky many students will run away from their campuses and go back home it will no longer just be an issue of what you have or what qualification signs will happen in the atmosphere that will rattle governments will rattle people when that happens know that it's show time for us it's time we will come out and let the world know we are not ignorant we have been trained When that time comes, that is the time for prosperity for us. When the governments fail, we will tell them, let us teach you. We have been schooled in the spirit. When those demons come, that is the time we will cast them away. Listen, let me tell you something. Until the church is raptured, evil cannot prevail. We are the ones who will hold evil. Listen, 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 listen. 
this is happening faster than you can imagine because an ancient scroll i want all of you who know sid rot thank god you have fast internet you go and watch the last two programs the last two programs that they interviewed a 900 year scroll was found hallelujah of someone who had a vision 900 years it was found in the vatican it talked about all the popes that will be in the earth it mentioned the 112th one who is pope francis that was just put and according to that vision he said he's the last pope he said he's the pope that will be there even during the tribulation listen to me i'm speaking to you you don't think that there is time some of you are just waiting the world is shifting are you not seeing what is happening hear me this is not meant to discourage you are you listening to me this is the time when the sons of light will come out that's why you must subject yourself to these dealings the time is short for the manifestation of the sons the bible says we will literally hold the hands of darkness and say until christ comes we will literally stop these ufos and the rest we will frustrate them believe me Kaparatakaya. Men will come out with the spirit of Joshua and speak to the son and say, Stand still. He told Job, He said, Has thou commanded thy morning? And we will speak to those powers and say, Where were you when he founded the earth? When he put the constellations together, where were you? We will speak languages of audacity and power and of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Part of the revelation of that scroll was when the former Pope was going to hand over to this Pope. According to the scroll, he said the, this former Pope Benedict was going to handle to hand over to Pope Francis in March 2012. So those who were doing the research, they were surprised. Why was it in 2013 now? Only they found out that actually the pope officially left office in march 2012 it's just that it was within some of the people in the vatican just as you know the culture is they will give some time things are unfolding everything jesus said listen the bible should be your best textbook right now it's not just the issue of spiritual growth this is the prophetic map for the journey that is left for the believers when it's time for us to check up we are not going with it will leave it for those who think we are playing they will need it daily the bible says they will run to the mountains fall on us and the mountain will not fall at that time i don't know about you but i'll be part of those glorious people let me tell you brothers and sisters soon we are checking out of this place but before then you must give god your best the time is up the time if you've ever had any clarion call i'm announcing to you today everything that jesus said would happen has happened right now iran have prepared their nuclear bombs let me vow to you they are going to blow it are you listening to me the bible said it already the bible said it is going to happen hallelujah there will be a bombing the bible talks about bombing the oil the oil fields of arabia and it will burn day and night it's in your bible it's in your Bible. Many wonders will happen. Let me tell you something upon the surface of the earth. Already many nations, Russia and the rest, are already partnering to raise conspiracy against, Egypt, against Israel. The Bible says God will fight for them. There will be a mighty slaughter. Right now there is already different moves for peace treaties. And this is the kind of thing. There, there are already structures that will bring the Antichrist. I am convinced that the antichrist as a person is already in existence are you listening to me this is not to scare you we are not going as some beggarly people we will conquer and then we will leave this is what we are here nobody is shooting me i'm not dying not by the sword not by nothing let me, i i know no no accident no devil no sickness no outbreak of epidemic uh -uh. there is an immunity i've not been praying in tongues for nothing this is why i'm telling you build your spirit the days to come will be as it were the days of john lake 
many will be dying of epidemics but we know the spirit that brought it i will stand and say be still be far from my family hallelujah hallelujah we're rounding up there are already microchips i said this thing years ago listen i said this thing years ago that a time will come they will program degrees in microchips because they are already frustrated at the length of time it is taking people I, the bible says knowledge shall increase are you listening to me the earth is almost like a robot now everything is automated i foresee a time when they will program degrees in chips i read an article about certain activities of freemasons and illuminati and their job is to wipe at least one or two billion people they do not believe human beings are equal this is what was written in your book animal farm many of you have read it but you did not know that that's a prophecy all the movies you are watching now are telling you there is going to be a war between normal human beings and aberration x-men men in black i don't watch these films are you not seeing what is the meaning of x-men x means what former men you just watch them and get entertained they are speaking a language to you yeah all the films you watch now they are saying prepare for war lord of the rings is telling you there is war on middle earth these guys are not just writing out of nothing notice in lord of the rings there were many kingdoms some not generally human beings are you saying that what do you think was in the mind of the producers they are not as daft as we make them look it's only in the church that we have people just jumping and somebody just prophesied the lord told me that this and that calm down tell us what is happening right now the blueprint of the spirit believers our time of manifestation is closer than you can imagine it's closer than you can imagine i announced at the beginning of this month about the death of politicians and people in offices who how many of you were here and you had me announce to you i just heard last week that the governor of equity the deputy governor of equity just died and let me tell you something we have to pray because many things are happening in this nation are you listening to me the election for 2015 is already going on they just fool us and keep us to stand in the sun you stand with your voters card sweating meanwhile one year ago they've done it me i'm telling you this pray believers there is a lot going on in this country but you have a voice and you have a say you can speak to the territories and know you are part of this the devil will be afraid of you when he knows that you have this information last prayer point you're going to pray and say lord grant me access to genuine spiritual truth i'm tired of things that are not helping me I'm tired of things that are not relating to the blueprint of the spirit for now. Jesus is coming very soon. What you need right now is what is relevant for the time left. Lift your voice and say, Lord, grant me access to truth. When you are founded in truth, there will be no error. There will be no deceit. hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord i advise everyone please go to sidroth.com.org write it www.sidroth.org www.sidroth.org i want you to watch the last two episodes of his interviews some of you have fast internet you can download the videos i want you to watch it this is not just for you to carry it's just for your spiritual are you listening to me because they said a lot of things there that may offend lots of ministries and denominations are you listening to me and so it's not for you to start carrying news and uh-uh uh-uh this is for your spiritual development hallelujah praise the lord Lord, we give you praise. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, inside and outside, please hurry up and just run in and let's pray for you.
you're worshiping with us for the first time appreciate them as they come out please quickly quickly appreciate them as they come out thank you so much inside and outside quickly god bless you thank you for coming thank you please keep clapping they are coming hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia hallelujah were you blessed tonight i pray that god will bless and increase you in jesus name you'll never be the same a fire has been put in your spirit you will not recover from you have a hunger for the things of god hallelujah saints of god let's stretch our hands and bless them lord increase them we pray that the lord bless you may the lord keep you in the name of jesus everything that is not consistent in your life come out of her now out out of her in the name of jesus a devil of darkness come out now she's free pick her up we bless you you'll never be the same Never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will put a prophetic fire upon you. You'll begin to have strange dreams and visions. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Any one of you who is sick here, we set you free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command that a fire will come upon your life. You'll never be the same again in jesus name thank you very much i'd like you to just follow the ushers one minute and they'll have your details they'll be back appreciate them everyone let's listen to the following announcements and we're out sorry we took so much time that's all right Decoration and aesthetics department. Interested persons who want to serve with the above department should please wait at the minister's seat. This is only for decorations, please. If you want to be part of them, immediately after the meeting. Hallelujah. The above department is not open to final year students. All right, so decoration. If you are in final year, I think they want people who will stay for a while. Hallelujah. Our school of ministry officially commences tomorrow. Are you happy about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited. Please, all the students should be seated by 8.30. 8.30, please. The venue is God's Time Secondary School. Behind Cheltech, Leather Research. That's behind, beside Jawom. Hallelujah. Please be seated by 8.30. This is from the Welfare and Hospitality Department. Donuts and chilled Zobo are available for sale after the meeting. Please, after the meeting, you can refresh yourself in Jesus' name. All those going to Congo should please converge at the projector stand outside immediately after the meeting. Please, just move immediately so that you can, um, you can be attended to. Free bus transportation is available after the meeting. And then our bus project is still on. Hallelujah. I'll call on my darling to come and pray for us. Sweetheart, come. Oh yeah, it's your turn. Appreciate her. She's the latest woman of God. We are praying. I told you, you can kiss a small lady and a very old one. Stop there. Anything outside it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we are training this lady to become a powerful woman of God. Hallelujah. Pray for us. In Jesus', in Jesus name. Father Lord, we, we thank you for, for bringing this, your people, into, into your, your hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, let them not cause every, every, the 
if we deserve me. Let them not insult any person who loves me. Like, like I teach everybody that let them not go to hell in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. I appreciate her. Hallelujah. Please celebrate her mother. Come on, madam. Stand up, let's see you. The proud mother of a lovely child. Hallelujah. Some of you, when you were our age, bless you, sweetheart. I'm telling you, we are proud of the children here. We'll buy biscuit for them next week. If you are age 1 to 10, just come next week smiling. Once you are above 10 years, even by one day, forget it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for your people. Bless them in the name of Jesus. I speak over your life. You are anointed to do exploits. The Lord grants you, grants you wisdom and discernment in Jesus' name. You are growing from glory to glory. I rebuke death over your life. You need not fear anything because you are seated with Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go and do exploits for the kingdom. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.